was a reminder for myself and Abdulkalaj Jisa Da'ifu, Miskeen, Zalim, Jahad. <coughs> but for the grace of Allah that we are still in existence. Alhamdulillah Ramadan is a immense barakah from Allah as a great reset in which the munificence of the power of nine that its reality is a nukht and that nine fused, multiplied by anything renders itself back to a nine and in essence becomes a nukht and annihilates everything. And from its angelic reality to the dunya reality Allah put within the ninth lunar month, the holy month of Ramadan in which to annihilate the servant, take them down back towards nothingness and is a great rahmah and reset for insan. That's immense mercy from Allah When we try to understand magnetism, binary code, all, all these sciences that should be in the last days make more sense for people than telling them, be good. Good is Good is different in the minds of different people based on preconceptions and life's conditionings. What is good for you may not be good for me and maybe something else for someone else. It's haqqaiq and it's science is free from all of these interpretations and renders us the cleanest understanding that in this life of ours we are trying to reach towards Allah And that has to do with this binary code and the reality of magnetism. That if Allah is one, the one, the only one, then Allah is asking for us, then you have to be nothing. Because the only way anything is attracted with its magnetism is that you have to be nothing. So that one in binary code is positive, it's a positive charge. And if you act as if you're the one then your positive charge will repel you from Allah So this is a very simplified understanding in this reality. That Allah asks for us, I am the one and any illusion you have of being a one and something in comparison to Allah what they call ananiya, so faraun and arrogance and all that the devil wants for people is to push them away from Allah How to push people away from Allah is make them the one. Tell them in their magnetism that you're the one, you're the positive one, you're the great one. So you watch on social media they talk very bad to people, you're this, you're that, blah, blah, blah. you gotta be that, you gotta… It's the devil actually talking in, in, in the carnate of people, it's not even hidden anymore. The way in which they talk, the aggression in which they talk, the character in which they talk is to teach people to be one, to be the one, to be the one with the positive charge. And as a result just from their energy understanding it will repel. So they taught magnetism in school, if Allah is a positive charge then you have to admit that you're a negative charge. Only by admitting your negative charge you will be magnetically pulled 
towards Allah So we said the doorway to these haqqaiqs, Laila anta subhanika ini kuntu mina dhalimeen. That's your negative charge. There is nothing but Allah glory be to Allah and I am an oppressor to myself. Means I'm deflating everything that the dunya is trying to do and shaitan is trying to do to me by making me think I'm the positive charge, I'm the great one, I'm the one to, to, to be listened to, it's my ego that's been offended. This is the source of every anger. When you write down on your paper, what is anger? Anger is when you think that you're something and you didn't achieve and people didn't listen to you the way that you thought you deserved to be listened to and you were not recognized, means your oneness was insulted. So means the devil makes everyone to think that there's something, it's sicknesses or anger and that's why anger is disbelief, why? Because the one is disbelief, to think that your ananiya, that I am, I am, my I is strong, it's a disbelief and the whole path very simplified is to be nothing. And nothingness is not achieved by sins because people say, oh the sins are a negative charge. So no, the sins actually make you more positive. <laughs> the sins make you to think you're more positive charge, you're more of a oneness, you're more independent of anything. You think that you are escaping Allah's judgment, Allah's punishment, that nothing can reach to you therefore you sin. So that the real concept of negativity and to reduce ourselves to the negative sign, Allah is the positive sign. This is the essence of binary code, this is the essence of magnetism because the binary code is magnetism. So then our life is to be a negative charge, negative charge means humility, not sins. My negativity in this understanding is my humility. How much can I reduce my positive charge? Wallahi anta subhanika ini kuntu mina dhalimeen. Subhanika is that Allah is my positive, is my one and I am verily an oppressor to myself and I acknowledge Ya Rabbi I'm negative and nothing. In my negativity if it becomes sincere and through the tariqahs and practices because once you took the step of tariqah you want, you don't want, you think you can check out willingly, unwillingly, doesn't matter for Allah He guided the servant, you're on a path to now establish the reality of La ilaha anta subhanika ini kuntu mina dhalimeen. And that Allah would teach the servant through Rohani or nafsani that you are nothing. What does that mean, Haji Shah? You're frozen. Uh, Allah bring you down willingly or unwillingly. Allah doesn't care. Said, I enrolled you, the first thing they taught you. Laylanta subhanika ini kuntum mina dhalimeen. And that you're in a school and your life is about how to be the negative charge, not how to sin but how to deflate oneself. That La Ya Rabbi I'm nothing. And then every test will come that don't open your mouth, I'm nothing. Every, every difficulty come, don't don't justify your nafs, I'm nothing. Don't, don't try to validate yourself 
so that I can become nothing. If the servant is sincere, Allah grant them more of their negative charge in which he establishes you really are trying to be a negative charge. Then as a result of that negative charge its nature will draw close to the positive. So it's in our hands. That's why when we come to the tariqahs they give us the understanding of you're being tested. When you're tested remain silent. When you're tested do not answer back, do not fight back, do not show aggression. That is your inclination from the shaitan inside to reiterate to you, be the one. Don't let Allah to deflate you, remain as you're a positive charge and the more the person is a positive charge then the two positives deflect. And before you know it you're actually drifting from Allah Then they become more sinful, more negative character, more angry, more aggression. These are all of the characteristics that Allah is showing to the servant. So then the awliya have these understandings and realities that life was about being nothing. Nothing is through the test of humility in which whatever tests come in my life it's to remain nothing, silent. As a result Allah draws the servant into His Divinely Presence. So then this state of negativity enters into what they call this is the fana. So these are these Arabic terminologies understood with science and math. The fana is when Allah takes you from your thinking you're someone and begin to deflate you with all of life's testings, 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 family, children, relatives, shaykhs, teachings, everything to your nothing. And when you feel that nothingness Allah is drawing you, this is the ocean of fana in which you are being annihilated. And in that ocean of annihilation it's years of tariqah that you're entering into oceans of annihilation. One bombardment from another bombardment from another bombardment from shaykh talking back to you from everyone saying something. And never once opening your mouth and staying quiet, stay quiet, stay quiet. Because this ocean of fana is not something easy, it's not something somebody does one time and then think they accomplished uh, all the rewards of the heavens, it's a lifetime. It's a lifetime of Ashab al-Kaf the dog was thrown rocks at. Allah just showing your najis character, Allah will make the world to throw rocks. These are the mushkilat and tests and difficulties of life that they make the character of the person. And they teach them to be a nothing. And what Siddha Maryam described in Surah 19, Nasiyan Mansiya? Oh, I wish that I was nothing, a nukht, a line, nothing, nor appearing. Allah showed the fitna that would be attributed to her birth and to herself and what the people would call her of a divine nature. When these were the servants in which they wanted to not even uh, appear and be annihilated. And that was a great learning for ourselves that take a path in which nahsiyan mansiyat that, Ya Rabbi I wish that I'm nothing. And as a result of drawing in the ocean of fana, so you write the negative charge is in a journey, continuously bombarding and continuously being taught to be humble. In that, notion, in that journey of negativity Allah begins to revive the servant. We talked last night Jabal Kaf, this mountain of Kaf they described as, as a oceans of darkness. 
and the sheikhs have been taken through this in seclusion where it's an like eternal ocean of black, it's just black, means it's an ocean of non-manifest. And in this ocean of non-manifest means nothing, you're in a continuous state and dress of fana. Then this ocean of fana eventually opens in which Allah is redressing the servant. That you came to us as nothing and as a result of that nothingness now we revive you within our ocean of somethingness. As a result they were turned back on in that ocean that is a nukht which nothing is there Allah turned that servant back on. As a result they were dressed with the oneness. As a result of that reality Allah gives them in their seclusions that you have reached your death, you have reached these oceans of nothingness, you may remain here to be nothing in these oceans of fana or you go back to guide humanity. And as a result of their guidance and when Allah want to open for the servant's guidance they are sent back onto the earth, back amongst people and then they become a reflection of that one and they are out to train people now. And they train people that the shaykh has been trained when he's making his connection with his Lord he's nothing. In that nothingness he receives the dress of the one and when he's amongst his people to teach and to guide he teaches them to be nothing and he is the one. Because the minds of people that are corrupt they listen to the teaching they say, okay oh nothing, nothing, nothing then why we have to listen to you? And this because the sickness of the character of people that Allah this is the dress of guidance, this is magnetism and juzbah, this is the reality of what we described in fayats, this is the whole of tariqah. That when you come to the understanding of this one and nothing and then realize that the shaykhs, not all shaykhs, everyone calls themselves a shaykh. But they have to have been dressed, guided and in seclusions and all of their realities and each teach about the reality. How can somebody be from a reality that they don't even know how to describe? When they've been dressed by that reality their only purpose of guidance because Allah trained them, they're not on all the time so that everybody will walk on eggshells, they've been taught there's on and off for them. But when the time for their teaching, their majlis, their associations, they're on. When they're on everybody else has to be trained to be off. As a result of keeping the company with these shakes of binary code and magnetism they teach you. It's the same analogy, if you accept somebody is your shaykh and you accept that they are the positive charge, they are the charge that Allah is sending from Atiyullah, Atiyya Rasul, Ulul Amri Minkum is to obey this Ulul Am means he's a positive charge. He represents the Divinely Presence, the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad the presence of awliyaullah. As a result your life is that he is the positive and I am the negative and that's what we described last night in all technology, right? So you say, okay shaykh is not making this up, look at the technology. There's a master server and there's a, a slave server and you say slave it's bad choice of words but technology people made this up. There's a master unit. And then there's the empty unit. 
There's the master server and then the empty servers which just obey and follow the master unit. Same with the remote. You can get the universal remote, it's a master remote. The servant remote, the student remote is supposed to be completely empty. No thinking of all of its ego and all its buttons and all its choices. When they empty themselves and take a path in which I'm nothing. Laila anta subhanika ni kuntum bin adhalimeen. Ya Rabbi I'm nothing, I'm nothing, I'm nothing. As soon as I accompany that guidance I can then move into their presence and receive their tajannis and their lights. The more I humble myself that even I know Arabic better than him, I humble myself, don't say a word. I know math better than him, I humble myself, don't say a word. I know everything better than him, don't say a word. You took a path of humility and every time we struggle with that, that can be through email, through online, through listening on your couch that I don't agree with anything you're saying. Anytime you take that path, remember that's what Allah wants is you to deflate yourself, take a path of humility. The more you say, I'm nothing, Laila anta subhanika ini kuntu min al means in Salatul Najat continuously recite that seven times for your seven names in seven paradises. Laila anta subhanika ini kuntu min al And then what's Allah's reply? Fasajabna. That Allah provides a najat for those whom have offended and those whom have oppressed themselves. Means that Allah will give a reply to the servant who ex- acknowledges and accepts that as their reality. We give a najat for those whom have offended and, and harmed themselves but first you have to admit to that, you take a life to that and then you understood that Allah said, do you want to come to my presence? You practice with them. If you can achieve a binary state with the shaykh Imagine then trying to reach that with Allah without the shaykh. The infinitely more difficult but to receive and to achieve a binary state with the shaykh in which you take the teachings, you take the understandings, you take all the guidance and you tell yourself continuously every night that I'm an oppressor to myself, Ya Rabbi let me to be nothing. And that when they teach in my nothingness, as soon as I'm sincere and it's not for yourself to determine, Allah has a, a has a like a counter that monitors the heart and goes, <laughs> it's not you thinking I am sincere. Allah will test the person and then Allah will see when the heart is sincere. As they're sincere, they're drawing near into the heart of the shaykh. And then the fires, the lights and the energies of the shaykh are being conveyed. They're not being conveyed by the will of the shaykh. Oh, I like you more, I like you less, I therefore give to you, well that would be nafsani. Has nothing to do with the will of the shaykh. It has to do with the character of the students. When their character is sincere, And they humbled themselves to Allah humbled themselves to the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad and humbled themselves to the path in which, Ya Rabbi I'm here to serve and I'm nothing. Whatever I know, whatever you bestowed of me of knowledges, I'm nothing. And this was the difficulty with Sayyidina Musa and Sayyidina Khidr Because Allah gives from the highest standard. Look how high Sayyidina Musa is and how difficult it was just to be nothing. 
just to be humble. Every step of the way you have to say something. Until Sayyidina Khidr said, look the binary system is not going to work anymore. There's no way for me to convey what you wanted from Allah, you wanted to know of a higher knowledge. A knowledge, ilmu ke rushd, the, the words in Qur'an was to be rushed, to be cooked, to be brought to a whole new level of reality. How is a binary system of magnetism because the essence of its science is more real than the, the kalam of words and fancy Arabic that confuse everybody. The science of it is understood that he's saying, how my energy going to dress onto you when you're being a one and I'm a one and we're actually now repelling each other. There is no magnetism, there's no flow of energy from me to you for every time I want to convey a, a knowledge to you through my heart, you're identifying yourself, you're speaking, showing your title, as a result you are now repelling. So magnetism and the reality of magnetism is that I'm nothing. When I was nothing with Allah He drew near. When Allah taught us to be nothing in the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad our wujud draws near, not my mind and aqal, my soul, our souls go. As a result of drawing near then they said, these are your guides, they represent the Muhammadan reality. As a result I became nothing, my soul draw near to them. We described that in magnetism before, as a result of that nothing then you're in a continuous magnetic charge to these immense souls. And as a result of being nothing but charged to their love their fires and magnetic energy from paradises are continuously dressing the soul, not the aqal. They don't dress the brain of the shaykh. They taught him that whatever comes to you as a test in life be nothing. As a result of that nothing you have an immense love. With that love your soul is a magnet connected to us, yearning for us. And as a result of whatever Allah charges us with of lights and fires and emanations, it's flowing to you. Not from brain and ego, it's flowing to you free onto your soul. This shaykh is not picking and choosing and on the heavens picking they're choosing, oh not this shaykh, this shaykh. But whomever is approaching with sincerity and love. And the magnetism of their wujud is locked onto these realities, the fires of the heavens dresses upon them. And then that system is taught on earth that teach your students to love you, respect you, honour you. You can't go to five magnets and do that. That's why then the student loses, they're just dissipating everywhere, diluted. The system of magnetism is you give your love, you come, you took the path, you heard the teachings, I'm nothing, nothing, nothing. And when he talks you listen. There's even people talk on the other side, the ladies are all talking while the shaykh is talking. What kind of student is that? Show a complete disrespect. For the words of Allah the words of Sayyidina Muhammad and the words of awliya. Means your magnet is very far from that reality and drawing farther away from that reality. See everything is an immense science. If we took a path of humility, that's why the, the shaykh can see it's like a doctor's office. When you're not serving, when you're not cleaning, and you're coming to be served means you're coming and saying, I am a one and I, I'm related to a one and I am the one and the danger, why the shaykh has to identify that, the danger is you're not receiving any fayases, you're not receiving any magnetism, you're not drawing near to the reality, you're actually repelling yourself from the reality. If you are repelling from the shaykh, 
then imagine everything else that you're repelling away from. How could you be drawing near to Allah but you're repelling from such an easy practice which is a shaykh. Allah Almighty is the creator of all universes. How many 800 forbiddens He's written and how many of them are you achieving on a daily basis? Probably 799. So me Allah Atiullah is impossible. That's why Allah gave Atiya Rasul because only Prophet can adhere to what Allah wants. Then even Prophet is impossible. So Allah wa ulur amri minkum. And follow these ulur am, they teach with a mercy, they teach with a compassion, but they're teaching the same system. If you're rude to them, you don't listen to them, you're, you're arrogant with the teachings and in their presence, you could be at home and being rude and you think the shaykh doesn't see me. It's not, it's not important for the shaykh to see you. He's not coming with a stick like the Indian soldier come and hit you for, for no reason. But you're showing your wujud and your being, there's no ihtiram, there is no adherence, there is no love. As a result, you're not making a magnetic charge and connection. But then there are people who want so much to achieve that reality and they sit with all sincerity and they participate that you understand now then they click here, they do this, they do that, they do all of these things that been given as a guidance. As a result they have an immense love and Allah is the one whom then releases their soul to be bonded in the ocean and in the light of the shaykh. And as a result that shaykh's light is already in the presence of his shaykhs bonded. And his shaykhs are bonded all the way to the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad It's not a ship you have to board and figure out what your destination will be. It's an elevator that already is associated with the heart of Prophet And that's why Tasimu bi habli Allah is giving the example, hold tight to their rope and don't tafarab, don't separate from them. This love and this respect it builds the magnetism and through your soul, not through the brain and through your physical, you use your physical body to take you to that state of love and respect in which you, you want the knowledges, you, you want the teachings. The shaykh is talking and people are beginning to look bored, then what did they come for? They came for a dinner? So people then are sitting at home never seeing that but yearning for the reality, they want the knowledge. They want the fires, they want the energies and as a result their soul is drawing near into it and they start emailing that, I'm in the presence of Prophet I'm feeling this, I'm feeling that, I'm feeling all this because of sincerity. With sincerity the soul like a magnet immediately attaches and that becomes the Fulukul Mashhoon, these are loaded ships. As soon as people attach themselves, the, the soul of the shaykh is like a ship and as soon as people attach themselves they're being drawn near into that reality and that becomes the reality of magnetism. So to keep their negative charge they took a path of humility. As a result of that humility they were able to draw close to the positive charge. As a result of drawing close to the positive charge they receive the lights, the emanation and the fires. That's what's important is to make the connection, feel the connection, to be dressed by that connection. We pray that Allah give us its reality and more and more deeper realities of, of, of these lights and these emanations. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzat amma yasifoon wa salaamun ala mursaleen wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa. بسير سورة الفاتحة